Okay, so this is the video for Shimasini's Had I Not Been Awake for the CAS level study of poetry, 1900s to present, Shimasini and Robert Frost anthology. Um, so some contextual information that you need to know before studying this poem is that this poem recalls the aftermath of a serious illness that Heaney endured. He had a mild stroke in 2006 in his Donegal guest house, and it reflects Heaney's uncertainty as to where his next poetic spark may come from. Here he recalls a moment pivotal to his recovery. Um, possible theme could be grief or it could be the creative process as well. Um, if you look at the title, you can see that there are dominant motifs of Heaney's work, such as balance, steadiness and endurance, infused with a new awareness of instability, even in retrospect, and there is a gratitude for newly earned knowledge. This idea that if he hadn't been awake, none of these experiences would have happened. So there's a sense of gratefulness imbued even in the title. And the poem describes the moment when nature's external show of energy kickstarts his own internal. Okay? Um... If you read through it, you can see that there's first-person point of view shown through the eye voice throughout. Uh, you can see throughout the very first stanza that there, in the first line, is quite a lot of repeated E sounds. So there's lots of assonance, there's some alliteration, um, and the alliteration and assonance mimic the sound of the sudden violent gust of wind. Uh, the wind seems to drive away the debris of the poet's mind and clears the space for meditative encounters with the past or himself or the world around him. He begins and ends this collection of poetry with a reference to the wind as declarations of vitality. Um, so he starts off with, had I not been awake, I would have missed it. A wind that rose and whirled. So you've got that alliterative wind world. You've got the onomatopoeic world that again connotes the life and vitality or the energy and elegance. It seems that this is sufficient to stir Heaney from his side bed and challenge his previous incapability as a result of the stroke. The roof is important because we can see that Heaney replays his stroke in allegory and its immediate effect on his body, represented by his roof and the rest of his bodily house. Um, it's also really important that the wind represents different things in the poem. It is his wake-up call and the stroke, um, and it's not just referring to the nature outside. It takes on metaphorical meanings as well. You've got further use of onomatopoeia in Pattered, um, and you can hear the small, swift sounds that recreate the energy for Heaney to engage with and appreciate. Um, the adjective choice, quick leaves, again reinforces the swift sounds. And then we've got the reference to the sycamore tree. The tree is examined for being resistant to strong winds. And Heaney starts to use the tree as a symbol of life and vitality compared to the weather and the elements of the waning year to affirm his own vitality. Then if we look at the second stanza, we've got and got me up. So literally and figuratively allows him to actually get up and stir, okay? The whole of me a patter. So this line is iambic with additional syllables, creating a palpable sense of movement and progression, reflecting Heaney's progression as he physically gets up. Um, but not only physically gets up, metaphorically gets up as well, because it rouses in him an interest in poetry again that he thought was possibly lost. Uh, it's important to notice that there's enjambment throughout and there's repetition of the sound of the wind and movement of the leaves that seem to act as a restorative power that... Um, is able to rejuvenate Heaney's life force. The roof or the leaves link to Heaney's heart and the actions of nature, and Heaney feels reconnected to the world around him as a result of this moment. Uh, alive and ticking is a variation of a colloquial phrase. We can see that it's onomatopoeic in the ticking as well, creating lots of oral imagery, which is something that both Heaney and Frost seem to like to do a lot. Frost has got his sound of sense, and Heaney... Heaney's poems are always rife with alliteration, non amount of hair, sibilance, consonants, assonance, and this one is no different. We've got the image of like an electric fence through the simile, and this is an image associated with rural life, and it also suggests the pulsing energy that is rejuvenated within Heaney. We've got 
this suggestion that his nerves um, are at an all-time high, that he is fearful of being without poetic inspiration. And this emphasises... Um, this is emphasised in the refrain that is repeated, the had I not been awake I would have missed it, that we see from the very first line being mimicked in that second stanza as well. Um, so again, it reinforces the spark that Heaney has. You've got further use of alliteration, you've got repetition, you've got assonance, reinforcing his relief and exhilaration, and there's a joyful, um, rejoicing, triumphant tone because he realises that poetic spark is not lost. He also seems to imbue his work with a grateful tone as well. Um, then we hear in the third stanza that it came and went so unexpectedly. So you've got the juxtaposition of came and went and unexpectedly reinforces for us that Heaney ponders this vital yet transitory moment. It's unexpected and dangerous as we see from the choice of adverb in the second line as well. Uh, whether by enduring an immediate health threat by him or by him leaping up or fear or the stress or threat of poetic work. The incident has the potential to illustrate um, the suggestion that awareness of the world or poetic deduction or inspiration decreases with the onset of age or incapacity. But Heaney rejects this and he is grateful for the reawakening that this encounter with nature has given him. Um, writers, when they experience writer's block or even if something debilitating like a stroke happens then, might worry for the future of what was originally their bread and butter. But we see here that despite the fact that this could be something fleeting, that it could disappear, it doesn't, that it stays with him and he's able to embody it in the poem. Then you've got the alliteration of and almost, conveying Heaney's momentary fear of what the incident could have illustrated, but it doesn't. There is a sense of uncertainty that has pervaded the poem until this point, but now he knows that actually this has been a positive moment for him and that he can use this as a source of poetic inspiration. Then we've got returning like an animal to the house. Um, the simile or the image of returning home, Heaney feels fulfilled. His instincts in is referred to in animalistic terms and his animalistic instincts that we see here are actually metaphorically referring to his poetic instincts that remain instilled in him they're intact despite the health risk we can see that um Heaney is demonstrating in this poem that even the smallest gust of wind can be more than itself it can turn into something incredibly inspirational if you just look close enough. If we look at the very last stanza, the wind is personified as a messenger to Heaney, a courier, um, and that this is obviously metaphorically pointing out that you can still capture fleeting moments in poetry and I suppose capture them forever, immortalise them in the poetry, despite the fact that they seemed transitory at the time. You've got the onomatopoeic blast and you've got the alliteration that there and then the alliterative harsh T sound. Um, lapsed ordinary. So lapsed ordinary, this sense that they're possibly dying away as suddenly as they appear. And finally, the first sentence actually finishes after lapsed ordinary. Um, the final lines present Heaney's views on mortality. He's resigned to the transient nature of life. And we can see that he delights in moments and is determined to still savour them. Then we've got, but not ever after and not now. You've got the sejura, um, after, not ever after, and then the not now. You've got the alliterative not now. Uh, we can see that this seems for Heaney a singular experience, reinforced by the use of sejural breaks in the lines, but it holds great significance for him, and the final line suggests that it will have a resonance in his mind, that his poetic faculties and skills of deduction remain intact. Um, the enjambment used throughout reflects the movement or progression of Heaney from stroke to recovery to reflection to inspiration. Um, it's also used to represent how quick and fleeting the moment was, reinforcing the idea of a regular experience of poetic fear or health, and how Heaney has recovered from it. Um, the very final line there, and not now, 
is a negative take on the final lines of the Lord's Prayer and there's implicit uh, there's this implicit promise of everlasting life but he turns that on its head and instead he shows an awareness of human frailty and his own mortality um, perhaps becoming even more poignant now that we know that he is no more and was such a great and celebrated poet. He stresses or displays throughout this poem that age or illness does not erode the awareness of the world around him and he explores the theme of the brevity of life, the idea that the speaker's experiences have a kind of transient nature to them. He also explores the concept that unseen forces such as love and memory shape his collection and this appeared in the Human Chain collection. It, like the poem, shows Heaney's sensitivity to his surroundings following a stroke. Heaney and his readers become increasingly aware of their own mortality. Tone, it's contemplated throughout, it's reflective. Structure, you've got four tercets, so four three-line stanzas, and there's no rhyme scheme, it's written in free verse. 